Hi, my name is Fabien Christin and this video is an introduction to my new add-on for Blender called Photographer. Let's start with a very quick overview of all the features of the add-on and then I will dive deeper into the details in each setting. So you can install the add-on like any other add-on for Blender and you can activate it in your preferences. And what it's going to do is that if you select a camera in your properties, you're going to have a new menu here, um, which is called Photographer. And you can see here what settings it adds. You can control your exposure. Um, this is my preferred workflow with exposure value and aperture stop. But you can also use manual settings like real photo, uh, shoulder speed, aperture, and ISO. You have also white balancing. So you can design if you want your image um, to be colder or warmer or to have more green or more pink. And you can also use a picker to make the balance on something that should be gray in your image. And you have the resolution, uh, which is an override per camera. So all of these settings are, are stored per camera. So you can actually have different uh, ratios and you can also like switch between portrait or landscape. And if you switch to another camera, then you can have um, Oh, here it's going to ask you because it's going to find it's not your active camera. So let's make it the active camera. And now I can change the settings and I can give it another ratio. So if I go back to my camera and I make it active, you can see that I have different settings. Um, so that's it for the menu. Then it also adds two very useful buttons, uh, AFS and AFC. AFS is autofocus single. If you do photography, you know what it is. You can pick a surface and it's going to focus there. So it's very quick to just set up your focus. And also AFC, um, which is very handy if you are working and you're just like moving around with your camera. What it's going to do is that it's going to always focus in the center of the frame. So if you zoom out and then you zoom back in, then you still have the object in the frame. Um, and then you don't have to like pick an object because if you do that, then sometimes it just like well, actually it creates the, the focus point in the center of the object and not on the surface. So that's pretty annoying. So this one is always going to be on the surface. So that's really handy. I, I actually love using it already. So uh, I can turn it off and I will go into each setting now. So let's talk about exposure. As I said, my preferred workflow is using exposure value. The reason for that is that it's really easy to just set the exposure and the brightness of your image. And then this aperture f-stop value is only used for the depth of field. So then you can control how much like bokeh you want uh, in, your, in your image. And it's very similar to uh, working with uh, like taking photos with a uh, aperture priority mode which is what I do all the time or I use manual lenses that I have like an aperture ring so I love it because I can just like always set my my lens to something can kind of wide open because I love uh, shallow depths of field and then I let all the other settings to be automatic so that's why I like this workflow what you can see as well is that uh, this uh, depth of field, um, it's an option to decide or not if you want photographer to control your depth of field. Because if you are more familiar to the radius system and you want to use that, uh, you can do it. But if, as soon as you're going to click on depth of field, if you decide that photographer should control your depth of field, then it's going to override the settings. Um, and also something that you may have noticed is that this number is 0 0.2 and here my lens is set to 1.7. So there is a bug, I think, in Blender or with, with cycles. Um, it's that it doesn't calculate the f-stop correctly if you have a unit scale in your scene. So here, just for showing uh, for, for the demo, I've set up my unit scale to 0 0.1, which means that one unit is not going to be one meter, but one unit is going to be 10 centimeters. And if you would do that, uh, or if you would do like 0 0.01, which is one unit would be one centimeter, and I know a lot of people do that. I also think that's if you want to export to Unreal, that's the way to do it. But if you do that, then your f-stop value is wrong. Like you have to input something uh, like 0 0.02 instead, or 0 0.2 in my case. Um, so 
I fixed that in the add-on. Uh, at least you just put a real value and you get the real results independently of your unit scale. It's going to mul multiply it automatically. Um, so that's something that is good to know. Um, otherwise, you can use the manual setting, and that's great if you want to match a picture, like if you have an exif data and you know what shutter speed, aperture, ISO has been used. Um, it's great because then you can match it in Blender. So, for instance, um, and that's how I, I checked it, um, this is an HDRI that I captured myself, so I could just make sure that my HDRI exposure and intensity was correct by just inputting those values and comparing to a photograph that I took. Um, this is very close to what real camera add-on was doing. Actually, I got inspired by it and I just modified it to my workflow. So um, they did a lot of things right and I'm using some part of their code. Um, so kudos to those guys. Also, they had in the add-on um, a link to a chart on the website where they could see what exposure value meant because the exposure value, here it's 8.31, um, it's, it means a range of intensity. So here you can see that if you have an intensity of um, or an exposure value of eight, then that's actually something that would fit an office lighting. So I have um, I have changed that. So you don't have to go on their website. You don't have to click on the chart button to go there. It's already directly in the UI. So I think it's a nice hint for you to make sure that you expose your stuff correctly. Um, also. You can see that um, I'm just keeping it in a realistic range between minus 6 and 16. Um, but these are soft and mean, soft mean and soft max, what we call that. So the slider can go below that if you want. Uh, nothing stops you from doing that. It's just going to tell you that it's out of realistic range, but at least you know that you can do it. Don't feel blocked by if you want to use a 20 in your EV, then you can, of course. It's the same with the aperture stop. Um, 0.5, I think that's the l the largest aperture you can find on, on any lens uh, in the world, so I wouldn't go below that. And then 32, but you can also go to 64 if you need. Um, there is nothing stopping you now from, from doing that. Uh, let's talk about the white balance now. So the white balance is something I was really missing because I think that um, some people are doing stuff wrong, like they actually colored the lights or they colored the HDRI. And I don't think it's the right way to do it. I prefer to actually have the real color uh, from the pictures, from my HDRIs, uh, with a standard value of uh, 6,500K. Um, so a lot of my images are going to be like super orange or maybe sometimes super blue. But I think I, it's better to not fix the, those images because then when I reuse them together, I know that they have the right relationship between each other. So I prefer to do it in the camera uh, which I think is the correct way to do it, because then I can use my HDRI images for my lamps and my HDRI skies together, and I know that the relationships between those are correct. It's the same for the exposure. Uh, a lot of people just pre-expose their, their HDRI, and I think the software do it automatically as well, which is pretty bad. Uh, what I like to do is that I always keep the actual exposure value um, from the shoot, because then I can just tweak my camera and not tweak weird intensities, like I'm not going to multiply my HRI by 10 without knowing what it means. I want the range of brightness in my sky to be relative to um, my uh, artificial lighting. It's really helpful to make something feel way more correct in terms of, of intensities. Um, so yeah, something to know also, the picker, it's pretty good. Um, if you pick something that is very extreme color, that might give you some weird results, like if I pick the yellow in that case. So that would happen as well in any other softwares. But just to keep in mind, like that's not meant for doing that. <laughs> also, um, yeah, something, uh, the picker, if you ho hold your left click, it's going to turn off the color management, uh, which helps me to pick the right value for the, for the pixel. Um, so then you see exactly what pixel you are using. You don't have to hold it, you can just click once, but uh, it, it does it in the background anyway. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the white balance. Resolution, um, so something to keep in mind that can be a bit confusing uh, if you remove the resolution. And this thing, you can change it anyway, even if it's checked. Um, you can always change it. 
uh, because it's hard to me to, to just lock it, uh, I think. At least I don't know how to do it. But if you go back to your camera, then it will just reapply your ratio. Um, so I think it's something to keep in mind, like the right way to work with uh, those settings, it's to really like to create a new scene. Uh, that's the way Blender works. I've added that because I think it's nice sometimes to be able to just switch between cameras and not have to just care about uh, not seeing what, you, what you're what you doing. Like you, you don't have to change the scene. You can just very quickly see the new ratio and the resolution. And I think it's, it's a nice addition. But I would definitely recommend to use scenes. And um, yeah, I think that's it for the resolution. Um, AFS and AFC, I love those, um, especially when you have this such a, like a macro shot. Um, it's really hard to focus, uh, so I think this is really helpful if I want to focus on the arrow, if I want to focus on this rubber band. Um, it's just very quick and accurate. So I hope that you're going to like it as much as I do. Something to keep in mind, it only works with meshes, so in that case I have an extruded um, spline here an extruded curve. So if I click on that one, that's not going to work. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's only working on meshes. i see if I can fix it, but I'm not sure if it's possible because that's a raycast in Blender. Um, and a AFC as well. I, I hope that you, you will like it. Um, it's, uh, don't forget to turn it off, you know, because that's something that would like update every frame. <laughs> so that's probably a bit expensive, but, um, but yeah, it's it's good to have uh, to have this feature. Um, also, yeah, there's a nice tooltip that tells you what's the focus distance here, so uh, you know directly what focus distance you have been set with the continuous aperture. So I think that's it for the add-on. Um, one thing, uh, just a disclaimer: I'm not a coder at all. I'm an artist uh, who hacks his stuff to improve his workflows. So it's pretty probably badly written right now. Also, everything is in one Python file, so it's pretty hard to navigate even for me. So I have plans to clean that up and to like split it into different files. Uh, right now, I, th I think it's good maybe to release it because it's working, uh, at least it's working. So I think it was the right time to release it to you guys so you can give me feedback and I can improve it. Um, and also, if you are a coder and you look at stuff and you see that I'm doing it wrong, which is probably the case, just let me know, send me an email. I, I really want to learn all of that to be more efficient. Um, and, um, and I think that's it for me. So you can find the download link in the description of the video. And please send me an email if you have any questions or any requests. You can also find it on Blender Artist forums in the add-on section. And uh, I wish you the best with this add-on. Have fun. See you.